time I've done this format, so I'm going to be making sure that I stick right to five minutes. I'm very excited to give it a shot. The music business of only 14 years ago was built on the sale of a physical album, cassette, or compact disc. More recently, artists and labels generated income from the download of a digital file. In either of these cases, a portion of every sale would go to the artist whose album you purchased or downloaded. The recorded music industry has attempted over the course of its existence to swing gracefully through the jungle of format change, from albums to 8-tracks to cassettes to CDs, and then through two highly disruptive changes, first digital downloads and now streaming music. On-demand streaming music services, such as Spotify, Apple Music, Rhapsody, and RDO, are rapidly eclipsing sales of physical and downloadable digital music. In the U.S., almost 10 million on-demand streaming subscriptions have been purchased by consumers. Are you aware that streaming music services give your subscription money to artists you're not listening to, in contrast to physical or digital sales? This happens because these services typically distribute subscriber dollars by using what's known as the big pool approach. Let's start by clarifying what happens to your subscription money when you pay it into the system. As a general rule, approximately 30% of your subscription money goes to the service. For a $10 monthly subscription, that means approximately $7 is left over to pay rights owners. <clears throat> the big cooler pro rata approach takes all the money from all the subscriptions in a month and dumps it together into one big pool, into which is divided the total number of stream tracks that month. Every track that's listened to is paid exactly the same amount, generally just shy of a penny per play. What's wrong with that? Four things. Number one, with big cool, a single user who clicks 10,000 times is worth the same amount as 10,000 users who click once. But the value of 10,000 paying subscribers is clearly far greater than the value of a single subscriber, no matter how much they're clicking. Number two, incentivizing clicks makes fraud a profitable endeavor. Tricks abound on the internet to maximize your clicks, and every fraudulent click decreases the per stream rate for all artists. Number three, because extremely heavy users raise the overall average, this has the quirky mathematical effect of making the majority of users below average. Simple math shows if you are the median, but also below average, a portion of your subscription fee goes to extremely heavy users. And four, over eight million streams are required for a four-piece fan to make minimum wage from streaming music. Older artists that appeal to older fans with disposable income should be pushing those fans to subscribe. But with Big Pool, artists see their fans at their shows, but not in their royalty statements. Subscriber share divides the money you pay individually for your subscription fee amongst the artists that you listen to. In effect, everyone is their own pie, and you divide your own pie. We don't change the amount of money distributed, we just pay it out differently. Let's assume that you listen to 200 tracks in a month. If you listen to Alt-J 25% of the time, then the big pool 0.7 cent per track rate mentioned above, Alt-J would net 200 tracks times 0.7 cents per track, or 35 cents. With the same example under subscriber share, if you listen to Alt-J 25% of the time, we would multiply $7 by 25% and hand Alt-J a cool $1.75. Four times as much from one individual subscriber under subscriber share versus big pool. I put some other examples on this slide for you to review, and they just disappear. One total track play in a month, uh, well, anyway, I'll let you look through these, um, but three different examples. Um, subscriber share neatly addresses the four key problems we outlined previously for big pool distribution. Number one, the primary incentive is to get more fans. This helps both the service and the band become profitable, and more subscribers mean sustainable businesses and income streams. Two and three. The incentive for click fraud is greatly reduced. Any individual consumer can never take more out of the system than the cost of a single subscription. And three, all fans are equal. When fans can, have, uh, can make a difference in the lives of artists they care about, their engagement level will rise and the animosity from some artists towards streaming music will change. And four, Emerging artists and older artists are on a level playing field and have a stake in the system. In pre-streaming music models, a band with a couple thousand committed fans can make a real contribution to their income from physical or digital download sales, even if they had an older audience or weren't social media savvy. What's slowing the adoption of subscription streaming services is the lack of push from these thousands of disenfranchised vocal artists. We can fix the problems I've outlined. We can fix them today by changing the distribution methodology from big pool to subscription share.
five minutes. Right on the notes. Yeah! Even with technical difficulties. <laughs>